Welcome back Scala fans, this is Daniel here for Rock the JVM and in this video I'm going to talk about ETA expansion and partially applied functions which are two topics that are very loosely and incompletely explained in online communities. So uh, in this video the prerequisites are pretty simple, all you need to know is how to define methods and function values in Scala also known as lambdas. Also as usual I'll recommend that you code with me in this video and whenever you need to refresh your memory about these topics just refer back to this video or to its written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog with the link in the description. All right, so let's see what this is about. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is the distinction between methods and functions in Scala because we're going to build upon this concept later in the video. So long story short, methods and functions are different in Scala. So when I write something like um, a method with def, so when you say def, that's a method, and I'm going to define a method called increment, I'm going to name this increment method to make it super self-explanatory. And uh, let's assume that this takes an argument of type int, returns an int, let's say the implementation is x plus 1. Now you know what this, what this thing is, right? This is a method which is a piece of code that can be invoked on an instance of a class or on an object in which it's defined. So a method is a member of the enclosing class or object. So if I want to invoke this method, I would say partially applied functions dot increment method with some argument three, which re results in the number four. So you can only call a method on the instance of the class which encloses that method or the object which encloses this method. Now, even if you call the method w from the body of the class or the object like this, you in fact call this dot increment method. So uh, if you call this method without any identifiers before it, you're actually calling it from the this instance. In other words, the method that you're defining here is dependent on the class or instance which encloses it. Now, Unlike a method, a function value is a piece of code that can be invoked independently of a class or objects. So functions, also known as lambdas, they are assignable to values or variables. They can be passed as arguments or returned as a result. This is one of the most important tenets of functional programming in Scala. So if you define, let's call this increment function as x of type int arrow x plus 1, this is a function value. And if you want to invoke this function, I'm going to write a value, let's call it 3, as increment function applied to the argument 2, for example. So notice that you can call this function without referring to the class or object that it encloses. Now, even though in this situation I'm also using the this reference to use this member, uh, in fact, function values can be invoked regardless of where they're placed. So, for example, I uh, am able to define this in a local uh, block of code. So, this increment function is defined inside a block of code with its own scope, and I can call it independently, right? So, this function here doesn't really depend on the kind of object whose member it is, because in this case, it's not a member of anything, okay? So the difference between a method and a function value is that the invocation of a method or a function is done dependent on a class or object and independent of a class or object in the other sense, right? Now, behind the scenes, these function values or lambdas are actually instances of the function n family of traits with an apply method which benefits special treatment from the compiler. So what you're doing in fact when you're defining a function like this is to say, let's call this increment function explicit as new function one of type int and int. So this is a function that takes an argument of type int and returns an, uh, a value of type int. So this is just a trait with an apply method. So if I do apply, and this takes an argument x as argument, and I return x plus 1, this is a completely identical way of defining this function. So this is identical. So when you say something like this, x int arrow x plus 1, the compiler actually builds a function 1 behind the scenes for you. So this 
lambda syntax is just syntax sugar for creating a function one instance. So notice that a method is always dependent on a class or object which encloses it, whereas a function is just a plain object with an apply method. So you can use that as, uh, as you would use any other kinds of values. So functions and methods are thus different in Scala. However, because the user sees uh, them in the same way, so you're simply invoking them with the parentheses uh, kind of syntax, so increment method with the argument 3 and increment function with the argument 2, they look kind of the same. And um, even though uh, they are different behind the scenes and they're fundamentally differently represented by the JVM, they're kind of like morally equivalent. They are basically the same thing when we use them. So the ETA expansion mechanism allows the, this conversion between a method and a function. So this is what I'm going to talk about next, which is ETA expansion. So the purpose of this mechanism is to turn a method into a function value. Now, because a method and a function are seen very differently by the JVM, uh, you can't really say, let's call this increment f from increment function to be equal to increment method, just like that. So this is wrong. This is a compiler error. And uh, when you say something like that, the compiler will think that you'll try to call the method, which requires some arguments. So you will simply say missing arguments for method increment method. So uh, when you say something like that, the compiler expects you to call it with some sort of arguments, not refer that to um, the method as a function. So this is a compiler error. Now, if you want to use this method and turn that into a function value, the way to do that is to say increment f as increment method and a space and then an underscore. So this underscore is a signal to the compiler that you want to turn the method into a function value. And at the end, you'll obtain a function of type int arrow int. Now, this conversion is called expansion or eta expansion. And when you say something like that, the compiler will actually generate a piece of code that will look something like, let's call this increment f explicit, as x of type int, arrow, increment, method, applied to x. So this is the equivalent way of doing this, which is done by the compiler behind the scenes when you write this underscore um, at the top here. Okay, now the compiler can also do this eta expansion automatically if you give this particular value the function type in advance. So I'm going to say, let's call this increment f2, and I specify the type in advance, like int, arrow, int, and on the right hand side of the equals, I'm going to say increment method. So when I write something like this, the compiler is automatically able to detect the context in which I'm using increment method. So I'm using increment method in the context of defining a function. And so the compiler will do the eta expansion automatically. So when the compiler is certain that you are using this increment method to define a function, then the compiler will auto expand this method with the eta expansion mechanism. And uh, you can also do that, for example, when you say list one, two, three dot map. And uh, if you expect the function here from int to something and you use increment method, as a method here, the compiler will also use that to eta expand the method because in the context of map, the compiler expects you to pass a function. So the compiler will put in the underscore for you, but you don't have to, all right, because this method is automatically turned into a function. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. And um, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is partially applied functions, because this is another important scenario where this eta expansion mechanism is very useful. So um, when you have multiple argument lists in a method, let's call this multi arg adder, which takes two argument lists. I'm pretty sure you've seen this before. So you de can define methods with multiple argument lists in a uh, separate set of parentheses. And on the right hand side of the equals, you can use any argument from any list. So you can say x plus y, for example, this is a method with multi arc lists. And uh, if you define add to, for example, as multi add multi argument other with one argument list, uh, 
and then you put in an underscore at the end. This underscore is also eta expansion and it will turn this add to into something like y arrow 2 plus y because x has the value 2 because you've passed it here. And the type of add to here is a function int to int. So when you use eta expansion, this will turn the method into a function taking the rest of the argument lists, in our case just the argument y of type int, and the implementation will stay the same, where the first value here is automatically uh, replaced with the first uh, value that you passed here as argument. Right. So uh, when you write something like this, you will obtain the function taking the rest of the arguments. And this is pretty useful because you can use the rest of the arguments later in your code. So you can use this add to as a function, pass it as arguments, move it around your application, and then you would be able to invoke it. So for example, if I define a value called three, let's call this three alt because we've defined three above, I can say add to invoked with the argument, let's say, one, okay? And add to is a function that takes a single argument and whose implementation is two plus y, okay? Good, so um, in a similar fashion as what we've written before, the compiler can also detect whether a value is expected to have function type and it can automatically do this eta expansion for you. So when you say something like this, you will also get an eta expansion method. So when I say, for example, um, list one, two, three, dot map, and then I pass multi arg adder with fewer argument lists. So I'm gonna say multi arg adder with three, for example, then this method with a single argument passed here will be automatically expanded to a function taking the rest of the arguments, and then this function will be used for map. So this is another case of automatic eta expansion. All right. Good, now, so far we've discussed only methods that have a single argument in uh, in their list. So for example, this increment method. Here's something to, th to think about. So this is an interesting question. And I'm gonna have interesting question number one. Let's say I have a method, let's call this add, with two arguments, x int and y int, and this returns x plus y. Now the question is, what happens if I call add f as add with a single underscore. So when I write something like this, what should happen? Now, in this case, this method has two arguments and an eta expanded function value like this will have two arguments here as well. So this will be a function x, y, arrow, x plus y. Okay, and so this will be of type Let's hover here. We have two arguments of type int and the result is of type int. And obviously the implementation is the same as what the method had, okay? So the question number one is what happens when you write a single underscore for a, a method with a single argument list with multiple arguments here? And the answer is that you turn that into a multi-argument function. Now, another interesting scenario here is what happens if you have a multi-argument method here with more than two argument lists. For example, if you have a three argument adder, so I'm going to define here a three argument adder that takes three argument lists, x int, y int, and z int, and whose implementation is x plus y plus z, for example. And uh, let's assume that you use just the first argument. So I'm going to write a value, let's call this two args remaining as three arg adder, and I'm going to simply use the first argument list, let's say two, and then I pass an underscore here. Now, what is this kind of function? Now, in this case, we will get a curried function, which will take the remaining argument lists in turn. So the type here of the two args remaining function is of type int, arrow, int, arrow, int. So the first argument is the y here, which is the second argument list that we haven't passed here. And uh, this will return another function that takes the third argument here, which is z, and finally int is our result x plus y plus z. And so if you want to use this function, let's say if you want to use the, if you want to obtain the value 10, you would call two args remaining, 
with the argument three, which returns another function, and then you would need to pass in the other argument, let's say five, which is z. So this will be y and this will be z. So the semantics are the same. You would simply pass the remaining argument lists in an eta expanded function. Now, at the same time, if we pass more than one argument list in the um, eta expanded function, so let's say I define a value, let's call this one argument remaining, and uh, I use three arg adder with two and then with the argument three and then an underscore. Well, what you get at the end is a function taking a z and then two plus three plus z. All right, because this is the last argument that hasn't been passed and the type of this function is int arrow int. In the, the case above, this will be y arrow z arrow two plus y plus z. Okay, so this is the function that you will get after eta expansion. The eta expansion will take will simply take the remainder argument lists and then it, they will be chained together into a composite function. This is what eta expansion ultimately does. So in general, and to put it very short, eta expansion turns a method into a function which will take the remaining argument lists, however large they might be, in turn in a chained method, however long the chain may be. So I hope this was useful. Eta expansion in Scala is often covered in very small pieces in Stack Overflow questions, so I hope this video will paint a clearer and more general picture of what it is and why it may be useful in Scala code. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe for more videos like this coming soon, and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description around this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave your comments below and uh, check out the Rock the JVM website. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Until next time, I'm Daniel signing off.